Hey everybody, it's Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with a new video in our series, The Gambit Series. And this is on the England Gambit. Um, recommended only to be played on Friday the 13th. Go Robert England. Okay, so the England Gambit doesn't have a very good reputation, and rightfully so, but it's very tricky. So I, I actually recommend this video, um, whether you have white or black. If you play D4 a lot with white, you should watch this video so you see how to play against the England Gambit. And if you like to play gambits, which is what the series is about, and you like to get you know some quick wins and some exciting chess, this is a good opening for you. Um, Grandmasters and Super Grandmasters don't play it because if white plays perfectly, black's position isn't very good. Um, I've noticed players below 2,000, a lot of them don't know what to do against the England Gambit, and sometimes black just wins right away. So, okay, we take... Knight c6, knight f3, queen e7. And in this position, um, white has a couple of good moves. The most common is bishop f4, but a better move is knight c3. That's, that's the best move. And then after takes, um, the best move is bishop f4. Now I must say, I play the England Gambit a lot in Blitz and Bullets on chess.com, and I have this position like 3% of the time. Um, people don't usually play knight c3, and if they do, they don't play bishop f4. This is probably the best way to play for white. Then you take, and now uh, black has two options. He can play c6 or d6. Um, c6, the idea is to play d5. So we play d5. Castles, knight f6. e4. Um, you know, if, if white doesn't do anything and just plays solid, then black's position's fine. Black can move his queen away, play bishop e7, bishop e6, castle. There's nothing wrong with black's position. So white should try to punish black for having his queen on e7. So e4 takes. And here white has more than one move. In fact, the engine doesn't like just taking back on e4. The engine wants to play rook g1 or some other crazy kind of move. Um, the engine likes white here, but this is a very tricky position where white sacrificed a pawn and white has a bad pawn structure and black has to get his king safe. So the engine likes white, but you could play either side of this and you know, see who you like. Um, a more solid way of playing for black, if you don't like that and don't want to play c6, is to play d6. Okay, then e4, bishop e6, queen d4 is the best move. The queen can't really be harassed right now. And because knight b5 and bishop b5 are going to be really annoying, especially if you castle queen side, then a6 is the best move, stopping all of that noise. Castles, queen d7, and this is where I'm going to end this variation because we're not really in the opening anymore. Um, black can play solid with knight f6, bishop e7, or he can play for more, uh, excuse me, by playing knight e7, knight c6, attacking the queen, and then play bishop e7. Um, you could do either one depending on what white does. And again, white has more space, more development, and... Black has a better pawn structure. White's pawn structure is messed up on the king side. Double pawns, isolated pawn. So if you can survive, which you should be able to, eventually you'll get a very reasonable position. White has to play with a lot of energy to get make something of his space advantage and development advantage. Now, more likely than facing that, especially if you play people who aren't watching my video, is they're not going to play knight c3. They're going to play bishop f4. And there's two kinds of people who play bishop f4. People who are booked up and they know bishop f4 and people who are not booked up and they missed queen b4 check. When you play people who don't know the theory, which is going to be like half of your opponents, and you play queen b4 check, it's unlikely they will figure out on their own how to play. It's very unlikely. Now here you're threatening the king. You're threatening the pawn on b2, and you're threatening the bishop on f4. And in fact, there's only one good move here. It's bishop to d2. Most of your opponents will play that. If they play c3 or knight bd2 or whatever, then you take the bishop. Okay, now they can also play queen d2. This is a big blunder. And after queen takes b2, black's already completely winning. You're attacking the rook. You're going to win the rook. The only way to not win the rook is to win more. And that is if white blunders with queen c3. Um, you can pause the video now. Do you see the winning move for black? Hopefully, you said bishop b4, which wins the queen. It pins the queen to the king. Some people 
say queen c1 check, but they forget the bishop goes backwards. They're like, oh, I thought that was me. Okay, and instead of uh, queen d2, bishop d2 is the best move. Queen d2 just loses. Queen takes. And once again, there's two moves white can play, and the one that looks more aggressive actually loses by force. And that's bishop c3. That's a blunder. And now bishop b4 again is winning. And you're either going to win everything, you're just going to start taking everything. In fact, you're threatening not only to take this now winning a piece, you're also threatening to take this and win a rook because the bishop is pinned. So you could just take the rook now if it was your move. After queen d2 defending everything, now we have our checkmate. We take. If he takes with the knight, the rook in the corner is hanging. So we play queen takes and then checkmate. I've had this position many times. Um, instead of queen d2, let's say they take and you take and it's over. They can't defend their rook. They can't stop knight c2 check. It's, the engine says plus seven for black. There's no defense to all these threats. Um, so that could happen. Now, what they should do, especially if they're booked up, is not play bishop c3, but play knight c3. Now you play bishop b4, rook b1, and now you have a choice. You can play like a normal person, or you can play like a maniac. Some GMs play like maniacs. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. Possibly me. You can play queen takes c3. This was popularized by Amon Hamilton on his stream with the chess bras. Sacrificing his queen... You have a bishop, a knight, and a pawn for a queen. White has two isolated pawns. Very suspicious. In Blitz and Bullet, all right, but I wouldn't play it in a slow game. Although it has been played in a slow game by a grandmaster, so by more than one grandmaster. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. The normal way to play if you don't like sacking your queen is queen a3, rook b3, queen a5. And this position should be better for white, but it's very tricky. The A pawn's isolated, the C pawn's isolated, and the E5 pawn is pretty weak. Um, Black's pawn structure is perfect. So there's no sacrificed material here. So this is okay for Black. Grandmasters want to have white because they like the development. They don't like that Black moved his queen a lot. The bishop on C8 is hard to get out. But we have a lot of advantages also. So a very unclear, complicated position. Well, that's my video on the England Gambit. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And now you can play white or black and you should be okay. Until next time, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold with the Gambit series. Bye, everybody.